Hey, you there! Tired of long developing cycles? Sick of all that agitation by hand? Are your wrists tired from all that? Well, I'd like you to meet a new friend. Hey there friends, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my kitchen. And as you know, this is where I do most of my film processing. And today I want to talk to you about a neat little piece of equipment that came across my desk last year. I didn't really jump on the Kickstarter campaign, but my good friend Matt Betchberger, the man behind Raveni Labs, did. And he was kind enough to loan me the Aura Film Processing Machine. And this is an absolutely beautiful piece of technology that <laughs> is super cool. One of the things I don't really like about home processing is having to consistently pay attention, having to constantly be agitating film. And if you have long developing times, you really can't do anything else except stand and stare and watch the TV. And honestly, that's how I get through a lot of my long processing times. But this machine is absolutely amazing because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. And it certainly fills an interesting niche that for the longest time has only been filled by a handful of devices mainly Jobo and if you've purchased Jobo equipment right down to even their processing tanks they are really expensive so what this does is that it provides a more affordable way to get the same level of control and the same consistent action on your film processing without having to pay for an entire Jobo system and maybe just focus on buying the tanks. And the best part is, is that you don't have to just use Jobo tanks with this. You can also use standard Patterson tanks with it as well. So why don't we take a closer look at the machine, see how it works and take a look at some of the modes that it has. So the device itself is actually fairly sturdily built. It's a mix of plastic, 3D printed, some extruded aluminum, machine screws, and more importantly, the internal components are controlled by a Raspberry Pi, which if you're a computer nerd, you'll know that this is a highly customizable mini, mini computer that is really a single board and you can really do a lot with it. The important parts of the device are metal, such as the struts and the roller wheels, you also have rubber gaskets along these catches here, and the rest is plastic. It is fairly sturdy, but the one thing it is is not waterproof. So when you are processing your film, you'll want to make sure that the parts that could potentially leak are on this side rather than close to the central control unit. The shafts are driven through a rubber pulley belt, and that ensures that both move at the same rotation and everything is controlled by a singular motor in here. You also have at the front, you have a cooling fan unit and that's important to keep the internals cool and it will not work if it does get overheated. So you really don't want to run this consistently for long, long periods of time or long periods of developing. On the side, you have a USB port. I'm assuming that this is for updating your device's firmware. And then on the back, you have a standard barrel power adapter. And the device does come with one of those. It's just a 12 volt, two amp unit. So if, you, if this does break, I highly recommend buying one with the same output specifications, because if you do it with uh, a less amperage, it will force the adapter to work harder to power the device and could shorten the lifespan of the machine and more importantly, the adapter. 
There's a beautiful simplicity about the Aura machine because you have a single control screen and a single control knob that doubles as a push. So you use the knob to move between the different functions and then you push in to access them. And then you simply do a long push and that will move to the previous entry. So for most people, you will be doing 95 to even 100% of your time in easy mode. Easy mode will automatically rotate the tank in a constant action for initially 30 seconds and then five seconds every 30 previous seconds. So not my personal standard for rotating, but I haven't seen any changes in the problem. So once you uh, set the control knob to easy mode, you simply tell it how long you need it to go and you can go as low as a single minute, but nothing lower. And you can run it all the way up to an hour. But again, if you're doing this, if you're looking at an hour, you're getting into stand developing territory at this point. Again, same thing, you use the knob to go up and down. Unfortunately, it doesn't, yeah, it does. And then once that's done, you can also set the RPM. I've been doing most of my work at 50 RPM and I haven't had a problem with that. You can adjust that up and down, but for me, 50 seems to be the sweet spot. And then once you push it again, it will start rotating the tank. So as you can see in the rotation, it does the initial push for 30 seconds of constant agitation and then it slows down. It never actually stops. This means that you can still use a limited amount of chemistry in the tank. I've gone as low as 300 milliliters to do a roll of 120, and that seems to work fine. But as you can see, it is on a bit of an angle, so I tend to fill it all the way up to a full 500 milliliters, whether I'm doing one roll of 35 millimeter, one roll of 120, or two rolls of 35 millimeter. So the next mode is continuous and this will rotate the tank in a continuous single direction for your set duration of time. Again, you have the ability to set the minutes and the second and the rotating speed. Now there aren't that many developing times that rely on full continuous agitation there are only two that I've actually known of and used. The first is Ilford FP4 at ASA64 developed in PyroCAD HD. And the other one is Film Ferrania P30 in Kodak D96 at the stock dilution. This was a serious lifesaver when doing the FP4 because it's very hard to keep continuous agitation yourself by hand unless you have some sort of military march going off in your head. Another great use for continuous mode is for when you're working with stop bath. So you can just set it there for the period of time of your stop bath and let her rip. The final mode that is great for film processing is the oscillate mode. Now this is very similar to continuous, but it does alternate directions every 30 seconds and it's the exact same thing. Minutes, seconds, RPM, and just let it rip. And this is what I've been using for my fixing stage. So it gets good constant agitation for a full period of time. And it just helps get the fixing done quickly and ensures maximum coverage and maximum washing away of the unexposed silver. And finally, you also have timer only. And this is great because again, it just, you can set the timer and you're good to go. And what's really great about all of this is that when you get to the last minute, it will send off a single chime. And when you get to the 30 seconds left mark, it will give a double chime, which means that whatever you've been doing, you can just turn around and start paying attention again and get ready to swap that chemi those chemicals out. I use the timer section for my washing stage. So that makes it really nice. 
And the results, well, they speak for themselves. Now, most of the work that I've done with the, the machine has been black and white work, and I haven't really noticed any sort of flaws. The one thing they do warn about is if you're using color chemistry with here. If you've done a lot of color film processing, you know that there can be a gas buildup when you're running through the Blix stage. And when you're doing it manually, you can have a chance to off gas it, you know, burp it like a Tupperware container. That's not possible on here without seriously interrupting and potentially damaging the machine. So if you are using a Patterson tank, you might want to have a dedicated lid that is for color processing because you can drill a small off gas hole in the top, just put it right into the center and that will also help avoid any major leakage and prevent the lid from blowing off and potentially slopping blicks all over your kitchen. And I don't know about you, but I don't like cleaning. I do it anyways, but it's just a necessary evil within, within life of the homeowner. Um, and especially when doing work in a kitchen with film chemistry, you really want to make sure that you clean up really, really well afterwards. It will just save you a lot of headaches and cleaning up a catastrophic failure and potentially could damage your device. The one downside that is that I had to give this back. It was really difficult. This is an amazing tool that I definitely want to look into purchasing. I honestly don't know um, if they're for sale yet. As I'm recording this video, I've checked the website. You can find that in the description below. They aren't for sale yet, probably because they are still working through their Kickstarter rewards. They also sell a longer version that would be better for much larger Jobo tanks. And you could probably even fit a Cibachrome tank onto the uh, large version as well. So yeah, I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for this. This has made my life so much easier. Thank you again to Matt for loaning this out to me. I've definitely been spoiled by it, and man, I don't know what else to say. If you do a lot of film processing, if you do a lot of long duration film development cycles, or just don't like handling large tanks and it's just very difficult, this is definitely a worthwhile investment and one that I will definitely be saving up money to purchase when they become available to a wider market. Until then, get out there, stay safe, like a record baby, spin me right now.